Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Kulsum Arif, student of BS 7, Department of Microbiology, Cohort University of Science and Technology, Cohort. The topic of my interest I'm going to present today is the impact of dust on airborne Staphylococcus aureus, viability, culturability, inflammogenicity, and biofilm forming capacity. It has been taken from a research paper. This is the research paper which I'm going to present today and the journal in which this paper is published is International Journal of Hygiene and Environmental Health. Here are some contents of my presentation. We will go through introduction, objectives, methodologies used, results. We will have some discussion, conclusion, future research, and at the end, some references. Coming towards introduction, as the research paper revolves around Staphylococcus aureus. So what is Staphylococcus aureus? Staphylococcus aureus is a gram-positive bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria means after gram staining, it retains primary dye, crystal violet color, and appear purple or blue in color after oil immersion microscopy. They are round shape, means Staphylococcus is cocci. It is a facultative anaerobe, means it is capable of growing in both aerobic and anaerobic conditions. It's lack flagella, that is why it is non-motile, and it is a non-spore producing bacteria. It was a brief introduction of Staphylococcus aureus. Staphylococcus aureus usually acts as a commensal of the human microbiota. An estimated study shows that 20% to 30% of human population are long-term carriers of Staphylococcus aureus and they can be frequently found in the upper respiratory tract and on the skin. Although Staphylococcus aureus acts as a commensal of human microbiota. It can also become an opportunistic pathogen and it is associated with soft tissue infections, wound infections, and some respiratory tract infections that could be severe up to it can even lead to death of the individual. Staphylococcus aureus is resistant to some commonly used antibiotics like penicillin, methicillin, and the antibiotics associated with beta-lactam ring. Due to this resistance, there is an increasing prevalence of livestock-associated methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, abbreviated as LAMRSA, and community-acquired methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, abbreviated as CAMRSA. And these both pose a potential occupational health issue in Denmark. Denmark is our study area. The level of dust within the pig farms positively correlates with the concentration of airborne MRSA in Denmark. The exposure to the airborne livestock associated MRSA in farms is a known risk for a factor for nasal colonization of livestock associated MRSA. Because airborne dust is present everywhere and can settle on high contact formities, high contact formats like doors, handles, table surfaces, the workers' hair, and clothing. So once on these forms, formats, stuff aureus can be further spread through the environment via hand contact or any other sort of contact. It is also related to the survival of livestock MRSA that it can survive for several weeks within the dust particles. And this is the reason that there is an increasing frequency of detection of airborne MRSA from different indoor environments like hospitals, homes, grounds in schools, etc. Staphylococcus aureus is able to form biofilms. It is defined as a community of bacteria which have irreversibly attached themselves to surfaces that are either biotic surfaces or abiotic surfaces. Because they secrete extracellular polymeric substances that result in higher antibiotic resistance and prevention of phagocytosis 
and this makes Staphylococcus aureus able to survive or avoid desiccation in the farm dust because Staphylococcus aureus has multiple molecular triggers that allows them to form bio biofilms in such conditions. And this stable dust might act as a nucleation particle for the formation of biofilm in the pig farm environment. So this allow the Staphylococcus aureus until it persists in the environment until it gets dispersed and potentially enters into a host. Here are some objectives of my of the research. The main and the prime objectives of this study is to investigate the impact of airborne dust on the culturability, viability, inflammatory potential of Staphylococcus aureus post aerosolization and to obtain knowledge about the potential for the formation of Staphylococcus aureus biofilm after aerosolization and its dependency to the presence or absence of dust. And the, the objective of this study is also to know whether time from aerosolization to subsequent analysis that is referred to as the resting time affect the culturability, viability, inflammatory potential and biofilm forming capacity of Staphylococcus aureus or not. So these are the objectives of the study and to achieve these objectives there is a series of methodologies being discussed here. In this series of methodologies the study was carried out by aerosols containing Staphylococcus aureus that were generated in the absence of sterile pig farm dust. After the collection of aerosols, the culturability, biofilm forming capacity, viability, and inflammatory potential were assessed using the following methods. The first step, the first method used is the S. aureus suspensions and bubble generation. In this step, a strain of S. aureus was used. The strain was named Aureus Rosenbeck. It is an antibiotics resistant strain and it was grown overnight in triptych soya broth at 37 degrees centigrade under constant agitation. Afterwards, the solution was loaded into a custom bubble generator and bubbles were generated by passing sterile air into the bacterial suspension. Next step is the collection and aerosolization of dust. In this step, sedimented dust particles were collected from pig, multiple pig farms over a period of 14 days. Dust was sterilized by passing through gamma radiation, and then the bacterial aerosols were exposed to airborne dust by adding the sterilized table dust to the aerosol chamber. The next step is aerosol sampling. In aerosol sampling, Sample, sampling occurred by using four GSP samplers that were mounted on polycarbonate filters for the collection of aerosols. In total, 40 samples were taken for observation. And for the testing of inflammatory potential, 16 samples were taken and aerosols were generated for two hours and dust was generated for two hours without the presence of Steph aureus using GSP and was then collected. The next step is sample extraction. In this step, the bacteria and dust on the filters from GSPs were extracted in 5 ml of extraction fluid containing 0.85% NaCl and 0.05% Twin 80 solution by shaking at 500 RPM for 10 minutes. The sample extraction was done immediately, either immediately after 30 minutes or three hours post sampling. The time from end of sampling to extraction is referred to as resting time and the effect of resting time 30 minutes versus 180 minutes was studied in this experiment. The next step is to know the culturability and the identification of Staphylococcus aureus. For this, homogenized bacterial suspensions were pl plated onto nutrient agar media and were incubated at 37 degrees centigrade for 18 to 24 hours. The colony forming unit CFUs were confirmed to be of Staphylococcus aureus by matrix assisted laser desorption technique. Next step was determination of biofilm forming ability of Staph aureus. The biofilms were grown and analyzed using crystal violet assay. The biofilms were strained by using 125 microliter of 0.1% 
crystal violet dye in water and it was stained for 15 minutes. The excess of crystal violet was removed by washing with water and it was left to air dry. Now to check the viability of stuff aureus, viability qPCR technique was conducted. Investigation of bacterial cell wall integrity was done using commercial viability qPCR kit. The viability analysis was done by comparing the difference in cycle threshold number delta CT, which is an inverse relationship, means the greater the cycle threshold number refers to the lower viability within the sample and the lower cycle threshold number refers to the higher viability in the sample. Next step was the determination of the total inflammatory potential of Staphylococcus aureus. Measurement of total inflammatory potential was performed using chemiluminometric based assay using granulocyte like cells that were differentiated from HL60 cells. The HL60 cells are human lymphoma 60 cells. Then to test the inflammatory potential of the aerosolized bacteria, dust bacteria and uh, dust was aerosolized with 50 microliter of granulocyte cell suspension and 100 microliter of extracted bacteria were inoculated in white microtiter plate along with Hanks balance solution to test the total inflammatory potential. At the last, some statistical analysis were carried out. Statistical analysis regarding presence of dust and length of resting time on culturability, viability, and biofilm formation and inflammation were performed using R version. A total of 56 samples were analyzed, 28 of which were aerosolized with dust, 28 without dust. And for the analysis of inflammatory potential, 24 samples were used, eight were as aureus associated with dust, eight without dust, and eight of them were of dust aerosolized without any bacteria. Now, this figure is an overview of sample generation and the subsequent analysis performed on collected aerosols. This is Staphylococcus aureus aerosolized using bubble generator. Bubbles or bacterial aerosols are collected by GSP samplers. The bacteria on the filters from the GSP are extracted for analysis of culturability of S. aureus, viability through qPCR, biofilm formation, and inflammogenicity of the S. aureus. It was these were the methodologies used in this study. Now coming towards the result, what were the result obtained from this experiment? This graph is showing the culturability of Staphylococcus aureus aerosols. Tail violin and box plot showing the effect of resting time 30 minutes versus 180 minutes and presence of dust on the number of culturable S. aureus colonies per meter cube air post aerosolization. The box plots are showing interquartile range divided by median and the violent plots are showing probability density of the data. This result shows that the S. aureus aerosolized with dust and extracted immediately approximately 30 minutes after sampling had the highest concentration of culturable S. aureus in the air whereas Staphylococcus aerosolized without dust and when, when 80 minutes after sampling, three hours post sampling had the lowest concentration of the culturable Staphylococcus aureus in the air. So the resting time was observed to have a significant impact on the number of culturable Staphylococcus aureus on the nutrient agar plate. This graph is showing the viability of Staphylococcus aureus. The tail violin and box plot shows the change in cycle threshold number after viability qPCR of S. aureus. The aerosols regarding to the effect of resting time and dust, presence of dust during aerosolization. The samples which were aerosolized simultaneously with dust had generally lower cycle threshold number and as the samples that were aerosolized without dust had the samples that were aerosolized without dust had the lower cycle threshold number that refers to the greater viability within the samples means the presence of dust had significant effect on the cycle threshold number whereas the resting time had no significant effect on the 
viability of Staphylococcus aureus. This graph is showing the biofilm forming capacity of S. aureus. Tail violin and box plots are regarding the biofilm forming capacity of S. aureus as measured by average optical density of 600 absorbance of the biofilm produced regarding the effect of resting time and presence of dust during aerosolization. This result indicates that the, both the presence of the dust and the resting time had a significant effect on the amount of biofilm by Staphylococcus aureus means after aerosolization with most biofilm formed after aerosolization with dust and short resting time means most of the biofilm was formed when the bacteria were aerosolized with short resting time and the morphology of the biofilm formed during this period uh, were different than that of the controlled ones. They were more structured, more stocked and bulbous in appearance. The next graph is showing the inflammatory potential of aerosolized bacteria. Tail violin and box plot shows the inflammatory potential of aerosols collected over a period of 180 minutes, three hours post aerosolization that contained eight samples of aesorius uh, pure S. aureus, 8 of S. aureus with dust and 8 of dust only. The result shows clearly that this S. aureus which has been aerosolized without dust had no inflammation, inflammation in the granulocyte assay. Means the samples that were aerosolized without dust, the absence of the dust caused no inflammation in the granulocyte as in contrast the simultaneous aerosolization of the SOS with dust showed a significant increase in the inflammogenicity as compared to as aureus alone or dust alone so the, there was no difference in inflammatory potential of as aureus that was observed bacterial samples with short and long resting time means resting time didn't affect the inflammogenicity of the bacteria while dust affected the inflammogenicity of staphylococcus aureus in these results so these were some results discussed now coming towards discussion aerosols that contain mucus or exfoliated skin particles have been showed suspected as transmission vector for the spread of Staphylococcus aureus in farms and in farm environment. Because the greatest number of CFUs formed after the samples were aerosolized simultaneously with dust and extracted from the filter immediately. This shows that S. aureus has nearly significant higher culturability when it is in dusty environment in comparison to non-dusty environment because Post removal from the aerosol chamber, the fewest number of CFUs were formed from the samples that were aerosolized without dust and extracted 180 minutes for aeros aerosolization. And for some bacteria, aerosolization is a major stressor which in turn reduces their survivability because aerosolization caused poor positive cycle threshold value that indicate a reduction in the number of viable cells and then the, the uh, samples that showed negative cycle threshold value indicate a reduction indicate an increase in the number of viable cells because it is an inverse relationship the viability pcr result coupled with decrease in culturability suggests that the stresses of aerosolization might induce a vnbc state in staphylococcus aureus vnbc state viable but non culturable bacterial cells uh, state in staphylococcus aureus this state shows that uh, in this in vnb state vnbc state staphylococcus aureus will be considered viable but it not considered to be culturable. And due to this characteristic, these VNBC cells are persistent cells, which form important ecological reservoirs and are responsible for persistent and recurrent infections in humans due to Staphylococcus aureus because they persist in the environment. And due to this, in Denmark, the prevalence of MRSA and MSSA, methicillin susceptible as aureus in pig farm environment has been increased to 88% just because of the persistence of VNBC cells. 
and the simultaneous aerosolization of dust and staphylococcus aureus with a short resting time cause greatest biofilm formation while long resting time post aerosolization without dust have caused the least biofilm formation and the impact of resting time is of importance as dust containing SRS may settle on any surface such as high contact formities and the difference that came in the biofilm uh, structure after the aerosolization it may be possible due to the difference in uh, due to the difference in morphology could be due to changes in gene expression of the bacteria after they were aerosolized, aerosolization caused the, some gene expression uh, changes in the staphylococcus aureus that caused difference in the biofilm morphology. When staphylococcus aureus were aerosolized without dust, there was almost no inflammation occurred in human granulocyte assay. Although SRS is well known to induce an inflammatory response, the, re the reason for the lack of immune response in this assay could have been due to the relatively low concentration of SRS cells per well of assay plate and the production of superoxide dismutases, SODs, which degrade ROS, reactive oxygen species. The production of SODs, superoxide dismutases to re degrade reactive oxygen species by Staphylococcus aureus is a prime strategy obtained by SRS to avoid degradation and desiccation by host immune system. The farm dust used in this study was noted to be inflammogenic due to the presence of endotoxin, which is a well-known component of farm dust. And when the simultaneous aerosolization of SRS and the farm dust was done, it showed a 20-fold increase in inflammatory potential as compared with SRS aerosolized alone. And there was a four-fold increase in inflammatory potential as compared with aerosolization of dust without bacteria. These were the results of, uh, and the discussion of the results. What are the conclusion derived from these results? The main and the prime conclusion derived that the presence and the presence of air bonders during aerosolization of SRS affects the culturability, biofilm forming capacity, and inflammatory potential. But the viability of SRS is not affected due to the airborne dust during aerosolization of SRS. Means the presence of air bonders affected the cap of biofilm forming capacity. The inflammatory potential and culturability, but not the viability of S. aureus. The aerosols that contain both dust and S. aureus were obtained to have a significantly higher inflammatory potential than when either component were aerosolized alone. The study also supports the idea that good, if good hygiene is practiced and a reduction of dust generation is carried out in the environment, it will be important for the reduction of viability, inflammogenicity, and potentially pathogenic, pathogenic Staphylococcus aureus. And the study also suggests that the stresses of aerosolization may induce the entering of a viable but non culturable state in Staphylococcus aureus, due to which they persist in the environment and cause recurrent infections in the humans. These were the conclusion of our study. What are the future recommended research in this study further? It is important to perform the same study with dust from the other environments such as hospitals and homes because hospitals and homes are directly correlated with the prevalence of Staphylococcus aureus and its antibiotic resistance. More research is needed on polymicrobial aerosols and their interaction with different dust types to assess the true risk that the residents and workers may face in these areas. And it is also important and required whether the aerosolization itself influences the uh, survival and pathogenicity of the bacterium or not. These, these were some future research recommendation. And at last, some references of the research paper. These were some references being shared with you. Thank you so much for listening and paying attention to my presentation. If you have any query, any question, you can contact me through my Gmail ID. Thank you so much and Allah Hafiz.